Hey all, and welcome to episode 94 of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. My name is Kay, and this is my YouTube channel where I chat about all of my knitting and sometimes crocheting as well. So today is April 1st, and we have a lot to chat about today. So I have a couple of finished objects to share with you, a work in progress, we have a giveaway that we're gonna do on this episode, and I have a new sock design to share with you guys that is releasing today. So everybody go ahead and grab your knitting, your crocheting, whatever you're working on, grab your beverage. I've got my very first cup of coffee. I have not even taken a sip yet because it is still very hot. Grab your beverage and let's get started. It is very early. It's 6.40. I wanted to get this done before everybody got up for the day because we'll talk more in chatter, but my whole routine has just kind of a lot of it has changed for how I go about my day. So I wanted to get this in before everybody woke up this morning. So first off, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as The Crazy Sock Lady. And we do have a group for this podcast on Ravelry. If you're over on Ravelry and up at the top, you hit the groups tab and search Crazy Sock Lady Podcast. It's gonna pop up there for you. If you don't feel like searching anywhere, just go right down below this video and you're gonna find links to everywhere that you can find me, links to the show notes, any shops I talk about, all of that will be down there below. So the Ravelry group, I wanna to touch base with that really quickly because the Sash Blusters Cal is still going on. It's a year long knit along that I am co-hosting with Julie of Twin Stitches Designs. The idea is just to use your stash. So I have a video here on YouTube that I will link below for you guys if you have not heard of the Stash Busters Cal and wanna check it out. I talk more about it in that video. Um, so you can find out more information there or you can find out all the rules and everything over in the chatter threads. And I did open a new chatter thread. So quarter one, the knit along is split into quarters and quarter one ended yesterday. So I, the new chatter thread is up and running for quarter two. I will open the finished objects thread at some point today because I do know somebody has already finished something that they want to get entered because you don't have to start a new project for quarter two. If you were working on something that you started January 1st or after and you don't finish it till quarter two, it counts. It's not like you have to start something new for quarter two. I just thought it would be easier to keep track of the things that have been entered and prizes and everything if I split it, the threads into quarters. I just thought that would make it simpler on me. But let's see, was there anything else? Oh, the prizes for quarter one. I have not drawn winners yet since it just, I closed the thread this morning when I woke up, but I didn't get it closed last night. But I closed it this morning. I will probably draw prizes or draw winners next week. I don't think I'll get to it this week. It'll probably be next week. I will do a separate video just announcing those winners and put it up here on YouTube. So if you've participated, keep an eye out for that. Hopefully by some point next week and we'll see. Um, what I'll probably do is hopefully everyone will get to me fairly quickly with their information for the prizes and then I will wait until I have almost all of them, if not all of them, and then make one trip to the post office because we are under a stay at home order right now. So I don't wanna be running to the post office a lot. I'd rather if I can get it done in just one thing, or maybe I need to look into, I know you can do it from home, right? You can do it online and print the labels out. Maybe I need to look into that and then I don't have to go anywhere. I'm gonna look into that. I'll let y'all know what I've decided when I do the prize video. So keep an eye out for that if you've participated in that knit along. All right, now some finished objects. Let me see if my coffee is cool enough to have a sip yet. Eric can drink his like as soon as it's in the cup. I cannot drink it when it's that warm. It's too hot. Okay, it's not bad. It's cooled down some. That was good. That felt good on my throat. My allergies have been acting up lately and it's made me have a scratchy throat. I have two finished objects today. The first is this baby blanket. <clears throat> it is done, it's finished. I'm gonna come back here and stand up so that you guys can see it. Ignore my, um, my clothes that don't match here, you know. It's done. I am so pleased with how it came out. 
So if, there was no pattern for this blanket. If you haven't been watching, this is a blanket that my dad's girlfriend sent to me that someone in her family had done. I can't remember all of the details on who had done it and who it's going to, but someone in her family had started this blanket years ago, had everything for it in a bag, but the pattern, there was no pattern, no hooks, no hook, no notes, no pattern. The yarn was in there. And this center section starting right here and ending right here was done. That was all that was completed on the blanket. So I, d I couldn't figure out the flowers, but I was able to figure out this V stitch, I think is what it, I ended up looking up and it was called. Um, I was able to figure this out. So what I did was just take the other colors. There was blue, pink, and yellow, and then a lot of the white left. So I did panels in the same stitch here, did blue, pink, and then blue and yellow. And I thought that was nice to leave that center section as it was, and then they will know who did that. Or you know, they'll know that's the section that was done by, I think it was like a great aunt or something like that. And then I went around with the white and I did one round of half double crochet. I wasn't sure if I was going to do any kind of a special border, but I ended up having the white went further than I thought it would. So I ended up doing just a shell. I have stuff here to show you guys and I'm knocking it everywhere. I ended up doing just a shell. I did five double crochet in one half double because I did one round of half double and then going around I did five double crochet in one half double, skipped one, did a single crochet, skipped one, did five double crochet just to do a shell border all the way around. Then I soaked it in some tufted woolens wool wash, which this is just acrylic. I could have thrown it in the washer and dryer. That's what I would normally do with an acrylic yarn, but I hesitated to do that with this because it is such an old yarn and I just wanted to be extra careful with it because I, I don't know, it's such a special heirloom item for them that I just wanted to be extra careful with how I, I washed it that first time. So I did just soak it and then I took my drying rack that I use for laundry out onto our back patio and let it dry in the sunshine and it smells amazing. It smells like a mix of tuft woolens and sunshine and fresh air. <laughs> it smells great because it did have kind of a musty smell so I wanted to try to get rid of that. But yeah so this blanket is done. There's no project page for it so that won't be linked below. Um, there's no pattern for it. I have no clue. I did try to search when I first got the blanket and stuff in the mail and saw that there was no pattern in the, the bag, but I was unable to find a pattern that went with it. So I did the best that I could and I hope that they're pleased with it. I do need to get that mailed out. I have a couple of gifts to get mailed out. So I probably need to figure out the shipping online because I have quite a few things I need to mail out coming up here soon. Okay, my next finished object are my March Desert Vista Dye Work socks. They're done. I'm very pleased with them. The colorway is Charlotte's Web by Desert Vista Dye Works. And I did my Mahogany Run socks pattern. I did 64 stitches. US 1 2.25 millimeter needles, and I followed the pattern exactly using the slip stitch heel flap, gusset, and the toe. This is one of my favorite patterns. It's such an easy, mindless knit, and I love that ribbing, but also with some with eyelets. It's a lot of fun, and I think it looks really good in self striping. I'm very pleased with it. So I decided that these are going to be a gift. Um, I don't know if she watches. If she does, then you're going to know that you're getting these. <laughs> My mother-in-law mentioned that she loved these socks. So I thought it would be fun to gift these to her. So I did them her size. Um, I've made her socks many times before. So 
I knew what size to do and I'm gonna get these mailed out as a surprise gift to her. So I think that's it for those and that will actually wrap up finished objects. Only the two this time. So let's go ahead into design talk. And these are finished objects from last episode as well, because I did have to finish the second socks. But here is the new sock design. Look at these. Oh my goodness. These brights, these neons. Oh, so good. This pattern is called Rainbow Connection. And I am going to have a video up here on YouTube. It should be up by the time this podcast goes up. So I will link it down below where I go into more detail and chat a lot more about these socks. Um, I just think it's fun to do those extra little videos for you guys so that if you're interested in finding out more info, you can head over and watch that there. But there are two versions for the Rainbow Connection socks. The pattern's the same for both. I just give you notes on how I did each version. The first one is using self-striping yarn. And this is a kit by Susan of Desert Vista Dye Works. I will link her shop below because she is gonna have kits available. And this is the Summer Rainbow Kit. You get 50 grams of the black and then 50 grams of the self-striping. And there are gonna be four kits. So one for each season, winter, spring, summer, and fall. And it's a lot of fun in self-striping. The pattern is written for cuff down with a slip stitch heel flap and gusset. And you're carrying that black throughout the whole thing. You're not cutting that black at all. Same with the self striping. You cast it on and you don't cut it until you get down to where you start the toe. It, there's no collar work. It is not a stranded collar work pattern. It is just a slip stitch textured pattern. It is so much fun to do. So this is version one using self-striping yarn. Version two uses minis or leftover scraps, anything like that. You do still use a solid or a tonal. Um, you know, I recommend 50 grams of that. You still need a solid or a tonal. Carry that throughout. And then you're changing it up for the minis and you can change that up as often as you like. I talk in the pattern about how you can do that. But yeah, this one's a lot of fun with the minis. So here I'll show you the front of this one. The pattern does have some tutorials included for different things throughout the pattern. And there is a coupon code that you can use right now to get 15% off. And this code will be good until April 8th. That'll be April 8th will be the last day that you can use it. So the code is rainbow. I will put it right here and down in the show notes as well. And I'll have links to where you can purchase the pattern. And you can head over and use that code. If you can't purchase, head over on Ravelry if you like the pattern and give it a, a favorite. That always helps it get out there and get viewed more. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that one. It was so much fun to create. It's been months and months in the making. I've been working on that one for so long. I wanted it to be perfect and I'm pretty pleased with it. Yeah, I love it so much. So it is great for self-striping and for minis. I also think it would look great with two solids or tonals done together because you're still gonna get something that looks stripey, but I don't know, I think it would be great with that. I might have to try it with two solids tonals and see how it works up. Cause I definitely have some half skeins back there or some that are a little less than half that would be perfect to use up in a pattern like this um, that maybe I've used in the, a sweater or a shawl or socks even and not use the full thing. So I am excited to play around and knit this one a bunch more. I kind of think we should do a knit along for it. Should we? Let's do a knit along. I'm just gonna say that right now. Let's do a knit along. I'm gonna open a thread in the Ravelry group. I'll do some prizes. I don't know what yet. I'll come up with something and we'll make it last. I don't know, how long should we make it last? What do you think? A month or two months? Two months or one? You guys let me know below how long you want the knit along to last and I'll get the thread open. All right, I only have one work in progress. Oh, that coffee is so good. The first cup of coffee in the morning is just the best. 
I have other works in progress. This is the only one I'm showing. I should say that. This is in a bag from Sandy of By the Lakeside. And this is my test knit. I am ready to split for the sleeves. I am test knitting this sweater for Julie of Twin Stitches Designs. And she did come up with a name for it. Mindfulness. I think I forgot to write it down. I think the name she came up with is the Mindfulness Sweater. I will double check that and put it right here. But I'm pretty sure that's the name. So here is where I'm at. I am in love with it. Oh my goodness. Yep, I love it. So I'm ready to split for the sleeves. The yarn that I'm using is Plucky Knitter and the colors are, let's see if I can remember, Overcoat, Going Steady, cannot remember the light. I can never remember that one. Let's see if I have a tag in here. I should, yep. Dress Call, I was gonna say Test Call. I think I had Test in my brain from this being a test knit. Dress Call is the light pink, Going Steady is the bright darker pink, and then Overcoat. So the color work was so much fun to do. This is my very first color work sweater ever. Never done one. So pleased that this is my first one. I think the colors look great together. It's been a lot of fun. So now it's pretty much just mindless knitting. Once I split for the sleeves, there's no other color work on the sweater. It's just gonna be a great mindless knit. And I'm very excited about it. So I'm gonna split for the sleeves today probably later this afternoon or maybe even this evening, but it'll be, the sleeves will be split today. So let's see that, because that's the only work in progress I'm going to show because I did get a lot. I got the blanket done, my March socks. I got the scrappy socks done. So yeah, I haven't really worked on too much else. I've worked on a couple of vanilla socks, but not enough that I really think they need to be shown this episode. So keep an eye out for those next week because I'm gonna try to get at least one of them off of my needles by the next podcast. Oh, okay, that's a little goal I'm gonna set for myself. Let's say right here, I'm gonna get that sock done by the next podcast because I think setting those goals on the last episode really helped. I got all three of my goals done, all three of them. Finish my March socks, finish the baby blanket, finish the scrappy socks. Those are my three goals and I got them all done before this episode. So I'm going to set the goal of finishing my vanilla socks by the next episode. You guys have seen them before. They're the Fiber Nymph Dye Works. What color is your sheep? They're pink and very bright and pretty. I'm almost to the heel, I think, on the second sock. So let's see if I can get those done. Those would be kind of good to work on well, the kids are doing their schoolwork. So maybe that's, I'll set aside that time to do that. Okay. We have a giveaway that we're gonna chat about. Clark and L. I I showed you guys last episode. I've got them overflowing out of this yarn bowl here. Clark and L is doing the year of minis and I got these spring minis. They're right here. She messaged me and said to do a giveaway for the summer minis. So that's what we're gonna do. So with the minis, here's the first one that I'll actually be opening today. And they come packaged like this. There's 13 and you open one per week. So the next spring, last time that I talked about these, she did still have spring and winter ones available. So you can check those out if you want, but she now has the summer ones listed as well. And we're gonna do a giveaway for those summer ones. So I want you guys to comment down below this episode and we'll do a, we'll draw for the winner next episode. Comment and tell me something that has been bringing you joy during this crazy time. It can be anything, it doesn't have to be knitting related. Anything at all, something that's been bringing you joy. Let me know that down below from the comments, I will draw a winner next episode. 
and announce that. All right, last knitting related thing that I wanted to chat with you guys about is the Yarnable subscription boxes. I don't have a new one to share here today, but I wanted to let you guys know that they are open right now. Signups are open to new members. So I've talked about it before. I do the Yarnable unboxings and I will link March's unboxing down below in case you want to go check out an unboxing. I haven't gotten April's yet to do a video, but I wanted to make sure to let you guys know that they were open right now for new members to sign up because it is they're only open a limited amount of times throughout the year for new people to sign up. So with the Yarnable unboxing, you get one to two skeins of yarn, either fingering weight or DK. And then there are little extra goodies included in the box as well. And this is put on by Cheryl of Hypnotic Yarn. And I have a coupon code that I can share with you guys. So the signups are open today, April 1st through April 4th. April 4th will be the last day that they're open. And the code will get you $5 off of your first box. And the code is Sock Lady. So I will have a link that I will put down below for you guys to Yarnable. It is an affiliate link and you can head over and check it out. And if you're interested in getting a box, getting a little brightness, a little happy mail coming your way, then you can do that and make sure to use the code if you do to get that $5 off of your first box. All right, I think that wraps up the knitting. I'll do just a little bit of chatter. Um, this morning, I was in the kitchen and I saw the calendar that's on our refrigerator and I thought, oh, let's switch it to April. I switched it to April and it's blank because it's a new month. I didn't have anything. I think I had no school wrote down on one day when the boys didn't have school. But I thought, well, there won't really be anything wrote on it. <laughs> it's going to be blank for the foreseeable future. So yeah, we're just, I think we're settling into a new routine this week, a good routine. Yesterday felt really, really great. The boys started online schooling on Monday. Monday, it wasn't too rough. It wasn't bad, but it was a little longer than I think most days will be because we were trying to figure things out and all the different programs. And then they had Zoom calls with some of their teachers, which was amazing. I think that's so great. One of Austin's teachers is doing it every day, Monday through Friday. Um, so he did it Monday and Tuesday. And then Wyatt's teacher did one Monday and then is doing another one today. So I'm really happy that they're doing that. It's nice, I think, for them to get to see the kids and the kids to get to see them. But anyway, so Monday took a little longer. We sat down. I decided on Mondays because they have all the assignments for the whole week on there. So I said, okay, on Mondays, the first thing we're going to do Monday morning is you're going to sit down and you're going to plan out your week, what assignments you're going to do each day. And you know, that may get tweaked throughout the week some, but we're going to have that schedule set in place. So you know what you're expected to do each day. And it just helps plan things out so that when it gets to Friday, it's not like, oh my gosh, there's so much work that I'm going to be working all day on Friday or Sunday if they put it off that long. We're not going to do that. We're going to have everything planned out so it's Monday through Friday and you're done by Friday. Um, you know, unless they have a big project due or something that needs extra work. But so we did that Monday and then Tuesday went really smooth. They had their list of assignments that they needed to work on and turn in on Tuesday and they got those done and then they had the rest of their day. So it was great. So they've been getting up at eight, school at nine. I think that's going to work out really well. It's providing them with structure and routine, which I think kids always thrive off of. Um, it's just making it flow a bit smoother. And then once they finish their school, they do their chores and then they're, they're free for the rest of the day. You know, they can go out and play some basketball on the hoop right out front of our house. Um, we pull it out if they want to play and then go throw the baseball back and forth in the field. You know, they can play games. They've got the rest of their day is free once they're done with that stuff. So yeah, that's kind of been the big thing this week is just settling into that new routine with school. Because the school is now, the governor announced that schools in Arizona are closed for the remainder of the school year. So they'll just be doing the online learning. And then we are now under a stay at home order as of 5 p.m. last night, only supposedly for essentials or exercise. So yeah, 
we're just hanging in there like the rest of you and getting by and settling into our new routine. Eric's been working from home this week, so that's been nice. I've really been enjoying recording and putting up the day in the life vlogs that I've done here recently. I hope that you guys have been enjoying watching them. I'm gonna try to do, I'll probably do one more this week and then a couple more next week. I don't know, I'd like to try to do a couple of weeks, a couple a week. Um, it's just been fun to do them. Life's just so different right now that it's kind of fun to document the different different things right now. So I hope that you guys have been enjoying those and I hope that you enjoyed this episode today. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. What time is it now? It is a little after seven. So I have just almost a little under an hour until I have to get the boys up to get them moving and get started on their schoolwork. So I'm gonna go get some more work done and I will chat with you guys again soon. Be sure to head over and check out Yarnable. If you're interested, check out the Rainbow Connection sock pattern that came out today. And I will talk with you guys again soon. Until then, happy knitting. Bye.